All right. Hello, trader nerds. Welcome in to a terrific Tuesday. Real traders never trade by themselves. They trade with their fellow nerds. Like we got Auction in here today. We got Drew. We got Edwin. We got Jim B. We got John R. We got Mike Shaw. We got Mo. We got the Rickster. Hey, Rick, I sent you the data. It's supposed to be a link to the data. So it was too big of a file to email. So you should have it. We got Schwaz in here today. We got Sean and we got Vicky with an I. Hey, everybody. And let's go to the hate mail because I get I get a lot of hate mail on what I do, and that's fine. I'm I'm a tough boy. I'm an Alabama fan. I can take it, right? I'm generally a champion, but every now and then we lose a game. And uh, market maker Q two I said uh, yesterday. He said, "I feel sorry for those people whose money you're losing. You should just give their money back before it's too late." And I told him, thanks for watching and commenting. Your comments are encouraging. Y'all, look, I've told you that this strategy that we're doing is very risky. You cannot do this with the children's baby formula, buddy. This is not what you do with the diaper money. This is lottery money. Some of us like to go out and buy, you know, buy a lottery ticket every now and then. We're just doing a lottery ticket. Just doing a lottery ticket. And it's amazing. I was showing this to my friend last night and he said Bobby something it just doesn't seem right it seems like how in the world could a strategy go from a hundred thousand dollars to a hundred and three million dollars and I was the same way I'm like I don't know I said I, I don't know I said it it really doesn't make sense at all does it and he's like no and so I basically went back to Claude and I know you think I'm you know I'm worrying too much on Claude, but I said, based on these historical results, I said, I have a portfolio starting value of $76,212.22. Can you use a Monte Carlo type analysis? Hold on a second. This was kind of cool. Can you use a, hold on a minute. Let me get into this first. Let's get into our little program here. Okay, there we go. Can you use a Monte Carlo type analysis to predict our portfolio balance in five, 10, and 20 years. Now, based on what it had done in the in the past, right? Now, now and I'm, I'm looking at this and I go, surely this isn't right. Okay, conservative case. This is the 25% percentile. Surely this is not right. Surely we're not going to be at $1.2 million at a growth rate of 75.12%. Surely that's not going to happen. And the 50 base case, this is in the middle of all the Monte Carlo simulations that run, is that we're going to be at $2.1 million with a 94% uh, return rate. Surely that's not. And then it had an optimistic case. And these, like, these weren't optimistic enough that we're going to be at $3.8 million with a return of $119,000. Ten-year projections. Now, this is just fun, y'all. I'm just having fun. Is we're going to be at 12.8 in 10 years. We're going to be maybe at 24. This is the base case, 24 million, optimistic 42 million. And then look at this, y'all. If you could hang on for 20 years, and if the past were to reflect itself into the future, and there's no guarantee of that, right? Things could happen. Is 156 million after 20 years, uh, 287 million, the 50th percentile, or uh, the 75th percentile, if it really went good, you'd be at about half a billion dollars. Surely, that's not possible, right? I mean, this is just an AI's attempt at guessing at what we would be at, but it's kind of fun to play along, isn't it? And I'll do sixty-five or seventy-five thousand dollars to play along. My friend was like, "Well, heck yeah, why not? You know, it'll it'll be kind of fun." So I'm really excited about the prospects of what this can do. So we'll see. Our first month didn't go too well. All right now we're having a great day today. MQ is up 0.61%, uh, which is 125 points. That's a nice move for our little positions. And ES is up uh, only 15, 0.15%. Let's look at our big green monster, see if we can glean anything from it. Look at there, we are hugging the 50% line. And then in the MQ, we are still oversold. So the more we stay oversold, the more bullish this is looking. You can take this two ways. You can say, well, we're probably not going to be here. We should be here. And this is bearish. 
but I don't know. We're hanging a lot, a lot of time into the oversold conditions. The longer we hang there, the more we go, hey, baby, baby, 21,483, here we come. I don't know. Let's look at the linear regression. Linear regression is telling on the E-minis in that we are still wound tight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to bust one way or the other. It's going to bust upward. It's going to bust down. And the longer we stay in this little channel, the tighter it gets. And the more extreme that this gets. So we very well may have an extreme move on election night. Or it can still continue to be way on tighter than a top and, uh, you know, than a top. And then it'll just bust one way or the other. I would, you know, my, my guess would be that we're going to bust to the upside because the overall trend is up. But it is interesting. We had a, uh, a really, really long period of consolidation here and we busted to the top. But I'm not sure if this will, uh, I don't know. It wasn't that big of a bust to the top because it basically went back into another period of consolidation. But the longer we have these little areas where we just get tight, 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 the bigger we're going to have a big move. So big move coming. Just don't know which direction. All right. So let's see what y'all are saying here. I still don't understand why you're using TMF instead of going to a percentage of cash. I probably missed something. Okay, Schwaz, I actually back tested cash. I said, hey, let's be in TQQQ and have the remainder in cash. I actually uh, did a back test with gold, GLV. I did a back test with, uh, what else did I use? TMV. I did a back test with Bill using historical data. And TMF was consistently better than everything else. I even used SQQQ. And so basically, you don't want an inverse-related uh, thing to be your alternate investment universe. You actually want something that is uncorrelated. So TMF beat T SQQQ, uh, it beat TMV, it beat Bill, it beat Cash, it beat Gold, it beat it all. And by wide margin. So TMF is the, unless y'all can come up with something that you say, uh, yeah, TMF is basically uncorrelated. Bobby, daily recording channel has disappeared. Is it deleted? I have checked, show me all channels. No auction is there. Let's see, it's still there. Written, uh, let's see, it's, uh, where is it at? Daily recordings, right there it is. Let's see if I can check on the little thing here. Daily recordings, uh, permissions. Is it a private channel? Only select members will be able to see it. Well, let me make it unprivate. How about that? Let's see if that works. Okay. So, but it's still there. Yeah. Let me know if you can't get into it, but daily recordings is there. <laughs> so, and everybody got to realize what we're doing now is we're getting out of options selling premium. I just, I just, Hey, I've been doing it since 2012 and I've had some really good years, but I've had some terrible years. And I have basically come to the conclusion that I, Bobby Sweet Bobby, cannot outperform the market. I cannot achieve the 20% per year that I was hoping to achieve. We achieved 20% this year and then we got busted. We achieved 20% last year, but the bust that we took on August 5th crush that. And we made 20% the previous year. We were on our way. I had a hypothesis that we could do 20% a year. And we were on our way to mega millions. But it just got knocked out in one day. And I said, never again will I be knocked out in one day. So we came up with a whole different strategy. It's basically a buy and hold. It is the sweet Bobby leveraged empire. And it doesn't matter if the market goes up or down, we can make money because we can go from TQs to QLV to SQs when the market goes down. So it's just a it's just a little lottery ticket that we've got going on. And we're very excited about it. And every back test that I've done with Claude, I didn't believe it and I had to verify it myself. And that's why I said, hey, wait a minute. Let's see if I can find it here. Here's the ultimate back test. Here it is. 
the ultimate back test basically allowed me to say, hey, wait a minute, this thing didn't produce 85 million, it produced 103 million. Now, is it going to do that in the future over 15 years? We don't think so, unless things go really good. But look, you would have had 12.8 million if you had just put your money in TQQQ and done nothing else. But with our strategy of getting in and out and going to cash when the federal funds rate increases by half a percent or more over the last three months, we got $103 million. That's pretty cool. Hey, I got 15 years to try it. I'm only 54, y'all. That would put me at 69. Still plenty of time to enjoy it, right? We could buy a small island somewhere for $102 million. We'll be fine. So let's see what we can make with it. Uh, Claude thinks I can do really, really good. But let's see how our little account's doing today. So now let's go to positions. We are up in two accounts. We are up. I get it, Bubba. You might have been in a better position had you not had the 30-something naked shorts on. And you are exactly right, Mike. I, at the time, did not know how to use the Tasty Analyze tab, and it resulted in these steep losses. Yes, it did. And it was my fault. I had way too much exposure, way too much exposure. So, you know, we're doing good today, $283 up. Let's see how our little positions are doing themselves. Our ES position here is up 376, but if you take the other side of it, we expect our hedges to lose, right? Most of the time, the hedges will lose. So those are down uh, something. TML is down 590. But look at our TQQQ, baby. We're up $1,020 on that position. And our bill is doing what bill does, is it just prints money, right? It's just printing money. So we're up $212. So we're up, what, 1,012, 1,500 minus, what, another 300 or so. So we're up maybe $1,000 on the month. That's not bad because really, we're only having one-sixth of our portfolio at risk. So I think that's pretty good. Right? I think that's pretty good. I think that's really good. We started out with 76 something and now we're at 76,358 or 75 something. And now we're at 76,358. Still got 560,000 in all the accounts, but we're only running this in two accounts. We're running this in an $8,000 account uh, that's got $113 positive on the day. So we're going to get our money back. I, I, I believe it. And y'all don't have to follow me in this. You know, I know a lot of people are disappointed that I'm no longer an option selling premium food, but I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to lead y'all down something that is so dangerous. I mean, we just got our butt handed to us all this fed. I mean, admittedly so. And now I know why nobody shows their P&L. I know why they don't, because I want to hide it. I want to I do this every day and don't even look at that. But I'm not going to hide it from y'all to show y'all how bad I was. I want y'all to know. I want you to know, even though I don't want to look at it because it makes me mad. And am I revenge trading now? No, we're just trying a different strategy that doesn't involve my accounts being overdrawn. The worst thing that can happen to my $76,000 account is I could go to zero. Okay, I could go to zero. Okay, I lose $76,000. Well, big deal. It's not going to make a difference in my life. What a difference we made in my life. So let's see how our little hedges are doing today, don't you? So let's go over here, see if we remember how to do that. Let's go to our cap requirement. And cap requirement, not the traditional. We want to go to the Crimson account. And we want to include our ES and our TQQ. Now, we're not going to do TMF. We're not going to do bill. Those are uncorrelated, and those are not our risk assets. So we want to do those two assets, and then we'll go to risk analysis. In risk analysis, we want to go to points, and we like to move that up to 40%. Why 40%? <laughs> because that's how much VIX went up. It went up 40 points on all the speed. So I figure if we have a 20% drop, it's at least going to go up 40 points. VIX of uh, around 19 or 20 or 18 now would be 58, 59, or 60. Right? And let's fix this. Uh, hold on a second. Let's make this bigger. And this says that TQQQ would be down 90%, but we don't want that. We want this to be down about 60%. So we've got a $6,753 hedge to the downside. So what we've got is a hedged 
Trump, isn't it kind of cool that in the event of a crash, I'm not losing money, I'm making money. And then we would take this money and then we would buy a 60% depressed TQQQ. So you never want to do this strategy that we're doing. You never want to do it without the hedge. That's where people get in trouble. Oh my God, what if there's a 20% drop in a day? Well, we don't care because we go up, right? And the farther it goes down, like if this were a 30 or 40% drop and VIX goes up even more, hey, that's only better. Look at that. We make more money. So you want to be hedged to the downside. So we're getting close to where we need to put in some additional hedges, but I'm okay right now. If I made $6,700 and on a crash on the election night, would I be happy? Oh, heck to the end. So we're fine. Now, you want to look at your activity, see if anything's close. 205 to $1.65, that's kind of close. 220, 20, not close. Three, four, what the heck is that? Oh, that's a field order. Field, field, field. A dollar, let's take the field off. A dollar fifty to 20, that's a while, that's a while. That's getting close. We're about to buy these five, right? Uh, so that would be good. And like if you needed a little bit of a hedge today, you could just buy one of the five, right? You could just buy one. Or you could harvest one of these three. So you don't have to harvest them all. You just want to bump that hedge up just a little bit and keep it going. Could you do your hedge with TQQQ instead of ES? You could, Vicky. I haven't figured it out yet how you would do that, right? I would need to look at how I would set that up. But I think that's probably something that I could look at. Or you could do it in the QQQ. Right. Uh, but we need to look at it and see how we could do it. Now, SPY is enough correlated to the NASDAQ that I think both of them would really, 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 really pop in the event that things went up. Now, a lot of people say, Bobby, this is the dumbest strategy on the planet. OK, I'm with you. Listen, listen, this is play money. And I don't want people blindly follow me into this. But here's what I thought last night. I was doing a pitch deck for this. Well, let me just show it to you. And here's the pitch deck. Basically, these are the top nine, 10 actually, because Google's in there twice. These companies make up 50% of the NASDAQ 100, the QQQQ. So here's what we're investing in. Do we think over the next 10 years that Apple's going to do good, NVIDIA's going to do good, Amazon, Google twice, Meta, Microsoft, AMD, Tesla, and Broadcom? Now, you may have one dog in this, but these make up 50% of the NASDAQ 100. 50% of our returns over the next 10 to 15 years will come from these companies. And if one of these companies falls out of favor, it will be replaced by another company. Let's say people don't want uh, the electric vehicles. Then Tesla will fall out of favor in the NASDAQ 100, and it will be replaced by the other good one. Let's see what the NASDAQ, I'm going to start drinking Pepsi instead of Coke. Did y'all know that Pepsi is in the NASDAQ 100 list of NASDAQ 100 stocks? Let's see who we're supporting here. Invesco. Let's see if we can see it here. Look under the hood. Okay, here we go. Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, here we go. We've got autonomous vehicles, augmented reality, drones, robotics, satellites, smart homes, streaming video games, virtual reality. I mean, these are the companies that are making up the NASDAQ 100. But I wanted you to see that there are a lot of different companies that make up the NASDAQ 100. Let's see if we can find them here. Here we go. Apple, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Meta, Tesla, Broadcom, Costco, a Tom Sosna favorite. Y'all like Costco? I like Netflix. I'm watching uh, Average Joe on Netflix. It's really good. ASML Holdings, not sure what that is. We got uh, Advanced Micro Devices, T-Mobile. I don't have T-Mobile. I have Spectrum, uh, AstraZeneca, PepsiCo, uh, whatever that is, Cisco Systems, Adobe, Qualcomm, Texas Instruments. You remember the Texas Instruments calculators back there in the day? 
Intuitive Surgical, PDD Holdings, Intuit, Amgen, Comcast, Arm Holdings, Applied Materials, Booking Holdings, Honeywell, Vertex, Micron Technology, Palo Alto, Automatic Data, Analog Devices, Starbucks. Beth, you'll be happy Starbucks is in the NASDAQ 100. Maybe I will let you start going there. Gilead, uh, Mercado, Libre, Regeneron Pharmaceuticals. We've got pharmaceuticals in there. Lamb Research, Intel, Mondelez International, KLA, Airbnb. How about that? Uh, Centos, Constellation Energy, PayPal, Synopsis, Cadis, Couch, Crouch, Chot, Marriott. I just booked a room for Marriott the other day. Marvell Technology, O'Reilly Automotive, O O O O'Reilly. We got some trains in there, baby. We got the CSX and the NXP and the DoorDash and the Workday and the Autodesk and the Fortinet and the Trade Desk, Roper, Packard, Monster Beverage, Diamondback Energy, American Electric Power Company, Paychex, Copart, Atlassian, Charter Communications. That's I think Spectrum is under Charter. Ross, Beth likes to shop at Ross, Keurig, Fastenal, Old Dominion, Data Dog, Kraft Heinz Company. Throw your hunts in the trash and catch up. Use Kraft Heinz, Microchip, uh, GE Healthcare, Electronic Arts, your video games. You know, Lulu Lemon, Coca-Cola, Euro Pacific Partners. A long time ago, Pepsi almost went bankrupt and they asked Coke to buy them for pennies and Coke said, no, oops, they should have bought them. They should have bought them. So if we think that these companies, Moderna, Warner Brothers, Discovery, Dollar Tree, how about that, Walgreens, instead of going to CVS, we need to be going to Walgreens. So there's 101 companies in the NASDAQ 100. And I think over the next 10, 15 years, these companies are going to be the bellwether. I mean, they're going to be the, the, the you know, raging, wonderful companies. And if one of them goes out of business, guess what? No big deal. They'll be replaced by an up-and-comer. So do we think that these companies are going to do well? If you don't, you can be a little more <coughs> conservative and do you pro the 3X leveraged uh, S&P 500 fund. Right? You could do that, but have 500 companies in it. So whatever you know floats your boat, do it. But uh, I'm really excited about our uh, little strategy here. I think it's really, really good. The only problem is when do you buy in? You know, when do you get in? And right now, the market looks like it may be overall overvalued. So that's why I'm dollar cost averaging in. But if it crashes, hey, I'm fine. I got no crash. I got crack, total crash protection. So the key of what we have is we've got leveraged ETFs with a hedge. If you were to just do leveraged ETFs without a hedge, that's probably done. That's probably done. But we've got a wonderful, wonderful hedge. So I appreciate y'all joining me today. I love you to pieces. I will see y'all tomorrow. And if anybody wants that data to do your own back test, let me know and I'll send you a link. Y'all be good. Love you.